Hello, everyone. We back here at the Zureta channel with Cecile and James. Welcome. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I will let the Cecile and James introduce themselves. And you're, go you're going to talk about Cluster API and Cluster API provider for Azure. And we have just the engineer team from Microsoft working on those projects. And that's not just a Microsoft project, that's an open source project. Um, anyone participate with the CNCF Cloud Compute Native Foundation can help on those projects. Cecile, James, introduce yourself and let's get started. Welcome. Sure, thanks. Hi, uh, so I'm Cecile. Uh, I'm a software engineer at Microsoft Azure. Uh, I work with James in the Azure Container Upstream team, and we uh, work on a bunch of open source projects in the cloud native uh, space, uh, including Kubernetes. Um, and I'm one of the maintainers for Cluster API and Cluster API provider Azure. So I've been involved in Cluster API for, I guess, uh, about a year and a half now. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm super excited to talk about it today. That's great. Hi. James. Yeah, I'm James. Uh, I'm also on the same team, on the upstream team, and my focus is uh, on the Windows side of things. So I contribute to Cluster API for Azure for the Windows, as well as upstream Kubernetes for for Windows, uh, and the many other little projects throughout there. So, and I've been working with Cluster API for about a year now. And that's great, and that's why we are here. We are want to, you know, get more people involved and see how we can help them to get started. And let me share my screen, and then Cecile can get give start giving like an introduction what Class API is. Sure. And please follow us. That's the most important thing. Keep following, you know, the channel and follow those guys because they are the guys working on the project. Cecile, all yours. I have the Class API book here. What's that? Okay, so Cluster API is a project uh, that is a sub-project of Kubernetes. Uh, specifically, it's part of uh, the special interest group uh, for cluster lifecycle. And the idea behind Cluster API is that it's a project that uh, uses the Kubernetes APIs um, using custom resource definitions to manage the lifecycle of Kubernetes clusters themselves. Um, so what that means is that you're using uh, the same tools that you're used to as a user to manage your Kubernetes workloads to manage the infrastructure of the cluster itself. Um, and so uh, what's also great about it is that it's uh, a project that's uh, owned by the community and there are many different providers. Uh, so you have uh, providers on different uh, clouds um, and different on-prem environments uh, so you can really use the same uh, gestures to manage your cross clusters across multiple environments. Uh, so it's really uh, environment agnostic. Um, and it really helps uh, make the life cycle. So uh, everything that's after day zero, after the creation of the cluster, things like upgrade, scale, um, and uh, like destroying the cluster, uh, moving cluster workloads, at, at all, if everything all of that, everything, uh, et cetera, that uh, uh, really like helps you do that from the Kubernetes APIs themselves. Um, and so, um, so just for anybody that's not familiar with like Kubernetes SIGs, uh, we call them, we short, for short, we call them SIGs, but they're special interest groups and they focus in on different parts of the code base in, inside Kubernetes and, and also sub projects. Um, and so, um, it, the SIGs themselves have meetings on a regular basis, um, and usually once a week or maybe sometimes twice every two weeks. Uh, and so you can always join in and uh, they're, they're open to the community, you can come and you can join these. So this one is the cluster lifecycle for uh, cluster API. Um, and you can uh, find that on the community page for Kubernetes. Uh, oh, nice. Yeah, so you can find all of the meetings for all the different SIGs uh, and you can join, I think, uh, there's one specific for CAPC and Cluster API, um, which we'll be talking about here in a, a few minutes. Um, it's one of the providers, but there's also the Cluster API SIG as well. So, yeah, I'm I showing you the Class API, James, and um, that's on Wednesdays, and the CAPC 
I mean, on my time zone, it'll be a different day, but <laughs> I'm in Australia. That's, uh, I think, Seattle time zone, PT, and um, yeah, you can see all these SIGs here. Um, yeah, so if you want to go head over to the concepts page, let's talk a little bit about uh, management clusters. Uh, so the way cluster API works is uh, you have a management cluster, which is a Kubernetes cluster. It can be any type of Kubernetes cluster. It doesn't have to be a cluster built with cluster API. It can be a uh, managed cluster like AKS, or it could be a uh, cluster that is on your local environment using kind. Uh, so it can really be any Kubernetes cluster. Um, and what you do is you install the uh, different cluster API providers on that cluster. Um, so there's four main providers. There's the core uh, cluster API which is everything that's shared amongst all the different providers to manage the lifecycle. There's the bootstrap provider, which handles uh, turning your machines into Kubernetes nodes. Uh, there's the infrastructure provider, uh, which is typically like your like actual infrastructure. So like, for example, Azure or AWS or um, bare metal. And then you have your control plane provider, which is uh, handling the life cycle of the control plane specifically, like control plane upgrades and things like that. Um, and so on your management cluster is where you create all the resources, um, the custom resources, which are defined by cluster API that represent your cluster. So you'll have your cluster, your uh, infrastructure cluster, which has uh, details specific to that infrastructure provider. For example, like networking things like virtual networks and uh, network security groups for Azure. And then you'll have uh, your machines, which are uh, like the units of infrastructure uh, where which represents like your nodes. So um, that's how it works in general. Um, and whenever you want to change something on the cluster, you will uh, typically change the custom resources directly on your management cluster. And then we have what we call the target cluster, or sometimes called, known as the workload cluster. And that will be your actual like cluster running workloads. So that's the uh, cluster that gets built and managed through the management uh, cluster. And so you can have multiple uh, target clusters managed by the same management cluster and they can be in different environments as well. So here in this example, you have clusters in uh, GCP, clusters in Azure, um, et cetera. So in, in this case here, the, these resources that you're defining, the workload clusters, uh, you, you mentioned there are custom resources. Uh, for anybody that's not familiar with like what a CRD or a custom resource definition is, what's, what's that look like for them? Um, yeah, so that's a really good question. Mm -hmm. So uh, custom resource definition uh, is, uh, it extends the Kubernetes API. Um, and so how this works is you uh, define like the goal state of your resource uh, using uh, YAML. So it works the same way as any other Kubernetes resource like pods and deployments, et cetera. And then, uh, yeah, we have also a good example in here or a good definition. And then um, you have a controller which whose job uh, is to reconcile um, the desired goal state with the actual state, uh, or actually it's the opposite. Reconcile the actual state with the goal state. So you want to, so the reconciler is uh, running in a loop. And so it's always trying to get your um, state, the actual state of the world to match what your desired state is. So I, I so what I do is I take uh, some some YAML that defines a machine. I deploy it to my um, management cluster. The management cluster has a component that runs on there that then makes sure that there's a node and control plane and everything else deployed in um, say Azure or AWS or whatever else. And so I'm just working with YAML as a user end user, and I end up with. Uh, actual machines deployed in these different environments. Is that right? Yeah, I well, was to comment, you know, for someone that never saw Kubernetes, I like to explain that, you know, CRD is like extending the Kubernetes API. Then we are creating new, you know, types or like new APIs. 
on the Kubernetes cluster. And this cluster will be just to manage all the clusters. And in pretty much where you define those machines and machine deployments and machine sets. And I think if you if you never saw it before, I think the first thing is for them to learn a little bit about CRDs. Then we get here. But yeah, that looks very good. That looks very good because now we're managing Kubernetes clusters with Kubernetes itself. So exactly. That's kind of mind blowing. And that's interesting, right? So you said there's the management cluster. How do, how do you how do you get that first cluster? You said you could use different types of things, but can you use um, cluster API to to create those management clusters, or how, how does that work? Um, yeah, so you can, but you do need uh, existing uh, API server, Kubernetes API server, to get started. Um, so what you can do, for example, is so you can actually move uh, management clusters. So you're not your management cluster is going to be around for the entire life cycle of your workload cluster, right? But it doesn't have to be the same Kubernetes cluster. It can be moved to between Kubernetes clusters. Um, and one way you can go about this is building a kind cluster, which is local. Um, but that's only going to be good as long as you're going to keep that kind cluster running on your local machine, right? Uh, in the end, it's not going to be very good for a long-term production running cluster, right? Um, so what you want to do is typically you want to move that uh, management to a long-running cluster. Um, and so we have actually a CLI which helps facilitate some of that management cluster management. It's called cluster CTL or cluster kettle. Uh, uh, pick your pronunciation. But uh, and we have a, a command called cluster CTL move. Um, so George, if you scroll down in the number two on the left, uh, there's a little explanation of uh, cluster CTL. Yeah. And so cluster CTL move basically helps you migrate all the objects of that cluster API defines. So like clusters, machines from a management cluster to another management cluster. So what you can do is have your kind management cluster and then you decide, actually, I really like this cluster. I kind of want to keep it around for longer. And then you can migrate those objects to uh, either a cluster API cluster. Uh, so you can actually have the cluster API cluster manage itself. Uh, so the CRDs uh, are actually <laughs> managing the infrastructure of that underlying cluster or to another cluster that is going to stay around whose only purpose is going to be that management cluster. Yeah, I think the, the, the nice thing you have to keep in mind for production, we need backup of those information and because your state will be inside this management cluster. And um, yeah, and it's nice that you have this move command that we can do that migration as cool. well. Yeah. Do you want to share your screen and show? You want to show something else from here? We have the providers as well. Uh, yeah, um, so I think today we're going to talk a bit about specifically using the Azure provider uh, and uh, using that to deploy a cluster on Azure. So uh, the Cluster API Provider Azure, also known as CAPZ, uh, is the provider implementation for Cluster API on Azure. Uh, so it uh, has its own repository. Uh, and um, yeah, that's the repo page. Uh, it also has a book with uh, user documentation that's specific to features of Cluster API on Azure. Um, and so, yeah, I think we can show a cluster. Uh, do you want to show? Should we do that? Yeah, let's do it. So I actually uh, kind of cheated a little bit and went ahead and uh, created a cluster ahead of time. Um, if you want to go through creating your first cluster, I highly recommend following the quick start and get cluster API group, uh, cluster API book, sorry. I think that's a really good step-by-step -step introduction to building your first cluster. Uh, what I'm going to show you though is just uh, like what's after that? And I think that will be interesting. Uh, so here I have, um, so I have a management cluster. It's actually an AKS cluster uh, here. Um, and I provisioned two workload clusters on, on that management cluster. So I have workload cluster one and workload cluster two. Um, and so when I do get cluster, cluster is a, it's a cluster API CRD, right? So I can do get cluster, 
I can describe uh, my machines in the cluster. Um, so all of those are like my uh, my cluster API machines. Um, and I also have a uh, cluster CL installed, which we talked about earlier. And um, one of the cool uh, features of cluster CCL is doing cluster CL describe, and I can describe my cluster. And this helps a bit understand a bit like the how the cluster is set up. So I have my cluster infrastructure, which is the Azure cluster, my control plane, um, and my workers. Uh, by the way, feel free to ask any questions as we go. If anything on the screen looks interesting to you, uh, George and James. But um, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, I, I, I can see, it says here that you have with those CRDs the definition of the clusters that you're going to create. And by reusing Kubernetes itself, it's like this management to create those things. And and I'm assuming that's just one cluster. Then you can, you have you have create you have um, create this management cluster before. Do you want to show how to create that, or you right? You can... So yeah, so those two clusters are already provisioned. I actually created before, but let's just create a third one just for the just for showing. So um, here I'm going to want to export a few variables uh, for. Uh, defining like uh, different parameters. So which Azure location I want this in. So here I'm going to use South Central US. I'm going to change the name to uh, something else so that this doesn't get confused with the other two clusters. And then I have my VM size and the number of uh, worker nodes I want, um, and then Kubernetes version. So I'm going to do that. And then I use cluster. Uh, so I've already in it my management cluster, which means I've already installed the cluster API components on it. Um, so I can go ahead and directly uh, configure my workload cluster. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this config cluster command, which basically generates a YAML. Um, it generates the YAML file, which contains all the definition of the CRDs that James was talking about earlier. And so it takes the cluster name and the Kubernetes version. So I'm going to run that. And then let's just uh, take a look at it just to yeah. show what it looks like. So here I have uh, my cluster. Um, and then I have my Azure cluster. So cluster contains things that are like uh, shared among all the providers that have to do with the cluster networking. Uh, and then it, it gives a reference to the control plane uh, object and the infrastructure uh, cluster. And the infrastructure cluster in this case is Azure. So I have an Azure cluster, which is a, also a different CRD, which is defined by the cluster API Azure provider. Um, and that has in the spec, so the spec is the desired goal. Um, and then you have status, which is kind of reporting on the existing uh, uh, state. So here I'm telling it I want it to be in South Central US, and I want a VNet with name new cluster VNet. Uh, this is my resource group name, and then my subscription ID, um, and then you have different. So how do how do objects. Those, some of those yeah. variables there look like the ones that you set as exports? How did those variables end up in this file? Um, so we actually have uh, yeah. So that's a good question. Uh, so we have different flavors uh, that are predefined and are uh, packaged as part of the GitHub release that you can uh, use. So here I'm using the default flavor by not passing in an argument. So it will fetch the default template from the release page uh, in CAPZ. And then those variables are actually defined in the template with uh, default values. So if you don't specify the default, it will, or if you don't specify the variable, sorry, it will use the default value. And we use uh, env subs to pass those variables and uh, generate the YAML file with the variables values filled in. Um, so then all you do is you do kubectl uh, apply, um, and then you pass in your file with all the spec, and that will go ahead and create all the objects on my management cluster, right? So this looks like it's really quick. This isn't actually the end of it. This creates the CRDs. <laughs> then you need to wait for the CRDs to reconcile and for the actual infrastructure to be created, right? So how do we do that? Um, so we're going to do 
cluster CL describe cluster new cluster. All right, okay. So right now, nothing's ready yet, it has just started. Um, and so if I do get cluster, it's going to tell me that my new cluster is currently provisioning. Um, So I, I think just to explain, like the cluster CTL, they don't talk with the, the management cluster. They just like a utility to generate like YAML files um, that you be applied to the management cluster, correct? Uh, so that's uh, yes and no. Uh, so cluster CTL, uh, the so actually the config uh, command has, uh, so has been recently renamed to generate to clarify that. Um, I should have actually used generate here. I'm still used to the old command with my uh, 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 muscle memory, but generate uh, is just a generate YAML stage. And uh, and then you can do kubectl apply to actually like apply that YAML. And that allows you to like review the YAML before it's applied and make sure you don't want to change anything um, and like uh, make sure everything looks good. Um, but some of the other commands interact directly with the management cluster, and it actually uses your kubeconfig context to interact with the management cluster. So if I do um, cluster CTL describe, that will actually describe my cluster that's installed on the management cluster. And then I can also use upgrade to upgrade the components in the management cluster. So for example, if cluster API releases a new version and I want to upgrade my management cluster to use that new version, I can use upgrades for that. So now that you've put this YAML out here for the new cluster and it says it's in provisioning stage, it's creating a cluster. It's creating a, a whole new set of machines that will turn into a, a cluster running on Azure. Um, how does that cluster relate to um, like, so are we creating an AKS cluster or is that, um, or I know there's also AKS engine, how do, how, how do all these things kind of come together? Great question. Um, so uh, here we're not creating an AKS cluster. Uh, so AKS is uh, Azure's uh, managed Kubernetes service. And so actually with Kabz, you can create AKS clusters. Uh, there is this uh, feature which is currently an experimental stage uh, for creating managed clusters. And so that way you can you could have like your uh, AKS clusters side by side with your self-managed clusters here. Um, and when I say self-managed clusters, I mean uh, those clusters here are not, um, they're not part of the AKS managed service. They're uh, managed by you, the user. And so uh, those are like a different, uh, category of clusters, which is more uh, it's more closely related to AKS Engine, which some of you might be familiar with. And um, AKS Engine is another tool that uh, uh, we have that helps you generate uh, actually uh, Azure templates for building Kubernetes clusters on Azure. And so it has been around for quite a while, and uh, it's still around. Um, and you can look at cluster API provider Azure as kind of an evolution of AKS Engine in the sense that it's doing sort of a similar thing, uh, help you build self-managed clusters really easily, um, but it's doing that in a way that is uh, more uh, transferable uh, and consistent across environments. Um, so whereas AKS Engine was very Azure specific, um, in the sense that it builds Azure ARM templates, uh, resource, Azure Resource Manager templates, uh, whereas like everything that you see here with Cluster API Provider Azure is all like YAML and things that you're already familiar with as a Kubernetes user. So it's not, um, it's easier to come from a different environment or have multiple clusters in multiple environments and switch back and forth. Uh, yeah, so I user. did. So once I learn a little bit about the YAML layout that we were just looking at, I can deploy a cluster. I can I can actually deploy a AKS cluster using that same YAML. I can use I can deploy um, like a self-managed cluster um, on Azure 
And then I could also deploy like a cluster on AWS all from the same management cluster. And I, I, like the same terminology, like all my Kubernetes experience comes to bear here because I can, like, I, I know how to use the YAML and I know how to interact with the Kubernetes cluster. And, um, and, and now I'm able to do provisioning of all these other clusters for uh, the teams that are that need them. So, yeah, exactly. Um, and so this is progressing. Okay, so uh, now that I'm, I have my cluster provisioning. I'm just going to show you the existing cluster. Uh, so, I have this. Uh, let's do Azure cluster. Um, Workload cluster two here. Um, and so here, this is the management cluster. So if I want to get the cube config of that cluster, actually cluster CTL also has a convenience for that. So I can do get cube config uh, for my workload cluster two, and I'm going to put that in a file. I and just then, learned that. <laughs> <laughs> I can do uh, cube CTL uh, and then say I want to use cube config. Oops, typing is hard. Uh, equals. Oh, actually, sorry. I use K. That's easier. Um, I don't know if anyone else uses that alias, but okay. Uh, and then that is going to show me the nodes of my cluster. Okay. Uh, so they're all ready. So here I have one control plane and two uh, worker nodes. They're both on Linux and they're both running Kubernetes 1.19.7. And let's see what that looks like in the portal. Uh, this is, oops, this is the actual like Azure resources for that cluster in South Central US. Um, workload cluster two resource group. Um, and I have, uh, my control plane and my two worker nodes here um, and, and uh, my virtual network and all the infrastructure that was basically provisioned for me for that Azure cluster. That's right, great. So I just cool. had to That's really cool. bootstrap like a YAML file, create that, and that create the cluster. Uh, Cecile, let, let's stop here on that part and we're going to come back on the second part with um, how can we operate that, you know, the, the day two operations of those classes, how can we update and how can we dig and maybe James make some more questions. We'll be back. Thank you. Thank you, James. Thank you, Cecile. Great presentation.